Good morning. Welcome all to the third of our Disrupting Disadvantage event series. And, and today we're looking at disruptive events. And I want to jump straight in and introduce our, our keynote speaker and with thanks for his time and willingness to be part of this morning. Thanks, Glenn. And look, I think my standing position is uh, the best led anything is that which is locally led. Uh, so whether it's local planning, whether it's local operations, local response or local recovery, and you can't achieve anything if you don't understand and hear uh, what the local voice is, uh, what the local priority is, what the local need is. So how do we connect and join those up uh, and find the right people uh, that, that are reflective of that local representation, not necessarily the loudest voice? What's really helped me be successful in the work I do is I never went to school for it. So I didn't come in with the, well, this is how it works mentality that I've seen from a lot of my colleagues. You build the relationships during the good times, not the bad times put in the time, put in the effort, um, you know, get to know who's in the community. When governments fail us, when NGOs fail us, our communities are the ones that look after us, only our communities. You know, we're in the bushfires, in COVID in Western New South Wales, our own people are the only ones that we can rely on. How do we get this kind of sense of urgency that we need to make a difference for kids? Health is not the main game for children. Schools and early childhood, they are the main game. This is where kids go. Seven hours a day, five days a week, 40 weeks a year, 13 years of their life. And what we found was that children were not as safe as they could be during the pandemic, that there were no eyes on children. Who's making decisions for children? And in every policy decision and every community decision, somebody needs to be talking for the children and, and similarly for the adolescents. There need to be adolescent voices in the decisions that are being made for them. It's absolutely critical that um, adolescents are sitting at the table. Healing becomes central to, to nearly all that we're doing. And whether that's healing ourselves as community, healing the environment uh, and looking ahead about building resilience so we're stronger and wiser. So it starts with all of us and it starts through, I think, leading through example and making sure the conversation is normalised. 